Hey guitar players, it's Nate here, and if you're into Spanish classical music or if you want to kind of get into that style, you've probably heard things like this. Or things like this. But what can you do to kind of take your playing beyond that and develop this a little bit more? In this video, I'm gonna show you three groups of three exercises that you could kind of use to get your facility with your right hand up and start getting some better ideas or more advanced ideas with these. Like I said, each exercise has three different versions so you can have kind of a beginner, an intermediate, and advanced one to shoot for to take this style to the next level. So the foundations for these exercises are gonna be the two things I already played, the E up to an E one step higher or one half step higher, that kind of thing, and then this kind of Malaguena thing. Now, before we get into the actual exercises, if you've never messed with anything like this before, one really good warm up is to just do this thumb and then the top three fingers and the top three strings of the guitar. Just alternate. That's gonna get your accuracy up with your fingers and your thumb and just get the facility you need started to go through these exercises. So if you've never done anything like this before, start here. Thumb, fingers. And when your thumb goes down, your fingers go out. The same thing when you're, the opposite of that, when your fingers pluck, your thumb goes back and prepares. So you get this kind of back and forth motion like this, opposing your thumbs your thumb and your fingers together there. Let's listen to the first group of three exercises. So you can see how it starts off kind of simple and gets progressively more involved. And all we're really doing is adding a finger of our um, I, M, and A each time we go through. So all we're doing is alternating thumb on the low three strings and sticking at first just one finger on top. I like to use my middle finger for this one, but you can use your index finger. So I'll alternate thumb and finger with the E strings and then switch to the A string, alternate between that and the high E string, and then the D string and the high E string. And that's the entire thing, really. Do that twice, and then move it up one half step, the chord shape. Do that twice. And slow it way down at first, because you're gonna have to work on your accuracy and just the idea of getting this motion down. it up. So that's kind of level one, getting that coordination together, thumb, middle finger, or index finger, just the one. And the next level, level two, adds in another note on top, so you're gonna be playing triplets. Triplet, triplet, triplet. Same exact idea though, you're just gonna play thumb on the low E, Index on the B string, middle finger on the high E string. That's really the whole pattern. You just switch from the E with your thumb to the A, then the D. And that's it. Same idea, we're just putting that extra note in. Move it up. And the more deliberate you can be about this at the beginning, the better it's gonna feel later on. Go very slow and be very intentional about it. And eventually, the more you do this, the more accurate you'll get and you'll be able to speed it up a little. And you'll be able to kind of improvise around with it. The final level for this one is, you guessed it, index, middle, ring finger on the top three strings. That's why this exercise was so important to start with to build that coordination. Now you have thumb, index, middle, ring finger. 
and then switch your thumb to the A string, do the same thing. So it's like we're doing 16th notes. One E and a two E and a three E and a. And this cycle through that again. Now, when you're doing this, there's so many notes going on, it's easy to, for it to start sounding like this. You wanna make sure that you have really good note separation between each note. If it starts to fall apart, just slow it down. On to the second group of exercises. This one is based on this simple little thing that we did at the beginning of the video. but we're gonna kind of displace the melody. We're gonna throw it down an octave like this. But we're gonna keep that note on top. And then we'll go through like a beginner, intermediate, advanced. Here's all three. So it's kind of the same idea here. We just have that melody on the bottom, which is a little bit different for guitar, but you have that same alternating bass string, the melody, and then the high E string on top. So you have. And I like to use my middle finger for this one again. So kind of the same coordination is being applied in different ways here. And then you have. So open fourth fret of the E string, second fret of the A string, alternating with the high E string each time. Do that twice. And then you switch to kind of what would be the, like an A minor shape. It's just one phrase, so open A, C note there on the third fret, second fret of the A, open A, third fret of the E string, first fret of the E string. That's the whole phrase. And you can use your index finger or your third finger. I like to use my second finger because it's a bit of a stretch here for my index finger to get that every time. Like it's a little bit tougher. So I use my middle finger. All right, level two for this one is, you guessed it, you're just adding in the top note on the B string and then you have one on the high E string as well. So you have your same melody on the bottom. But you're putting in between each melody note. So you have to keep your E chord on this time and you have to keep an A chord on, A minor chord on because of the way the melody goes with that B string on top of the, the chord change from the E major to an A minor, so. And that's quite a stretch for your pinky. And you don't have to have that on for the E chord. You can just do that and then switch to an A minor. And then I switch, have my uh, middle finger come over there for that next melody note. And then my thumb grabs the F there for that one. So an A minor. Okay, level three for this one. Just all four notes with a thumb, index finger on G string, middle finger on the B, ring finger on the high E string. And that's your basic pattern you keep going. And for this one, you do have to keep the entire chords on because you need these fretted notes for these chords. Same thing for the A minor chord there. So, so you get a bit of a stretch there as it gets a little bit tougher. So that's for E. Switch to your A minor. And then back.
Okay, the last group of three exercises incorporates something called tremolo picking, and it starts off with a really basic one, the one that we already kind of went over as its foundation. So that's number one. Let me play all three for you together. So this one, like I said, starts off with super simple. Basically have an E major chord on and your in, uh, middle finger or index finger gets the high E string in between each melody note. So on the D, G, and B strings, just do that twice. And switch to an A minor chord. melody there on the lower part is just okay the next version of this adds a note but it's on the same high E string with your second and first fingers so you have those two notes in between each little melody note on the bottom so And to get this coordination down, I found it really useful to go thumb, just over and over again. And kind of choke that second note with your fingers with your index finger, I'll show you what I mean. So you start off like this, choke that note like that. And be very staccato with it at first, very slowly. And eventually you can speed it up. And the last version of this is full-blown tremolo picking, so you can have your melody note on the bottom, and then A, M, I, or ring, middle, index finger. So you might want to work on just that for a while, and the, the same thing goes, I find really separating the notes, making them staccato, as you learn how to do this really helps. So start up very slowly, It's gonna take a while to build this coordination, but. So that's it for the three groups of three exercises, but the last little thing I did there on that playing uh, brings up two little more nuggets of playing in this style that I wanna share with you. The first one is the very last thing I did. It's just a little, it's a really cool way to kind of end phrases or strum the guitar. All you do is roll up on the top four strings just like that, and then when you get to your third finger there on the high E string, instead of just picking it like that, you pull it through all six strings very lightly. And the secret is to connect it so you don't have this gap between that and the pull through. It's, very, it's a little bit difficult to get down if you don't do it all the time, but it's really cool sounding. The last thing is just something like this. And to do that, all you do is start very intentionally. Third finger, second finger, first finger, flick them out and then come back in one at a time too. And when I started out with this, I had to be very intentional, very deliberate, and slowly speed it up and eventually you get to where, you know, like you're tapping your fingers on a disc or something like that. So take that, do it very slowly, intentionally. It'll take you a while to get down, but eventually you get to where I have control over this, right? So that's it for this video. I hope these exercises have helped you kind of see how you can take your Spanish guitar playing to the next level. And uh, just a couple recommendations for you. If you're into this style of music but you don't know who to listen to, go check out uh, Carlos Montoya. Um, let's see, another really good one is George Morel or Jorge Morel or Rodrigo y Gabriela. Those are all really incredible players that are inspire you to use this kind of stuff.
So let me know what your favorite songs in this style are below. That way, everyone else that watches this video and reads the comments will have some listening recommendations too. See you later. I, well, like the longer you play, the more tense you get. And like I was, like, I was barely hitting that high E string. Yeah. That's a good tip. Uh, if this is, if this makes it to the after cut, stay as relaxed as you can and play as loud as you can on that high E string. Otherwise, you end up doing this. Thank you.